Right, uh, this video is on SA 220. Uh, it's regarding the quality of the audit. We want to ensure that the uh, audit is conducted in a good quality manner. Right, so the name of this standard on auditing is quality control of an audit of financial statements, quality control of an audit. That we want to ensure that the audit is done in a good quality way or in a, the quality of audit is good. Now, how can we ensure that the quality is good by having some quality uh, control policies and procedures? Every entity, which is, I mean, not the mediocre ones. If you are working with a, with a with the firm firm of uh, among big four, if you are working among a firm of which comes under big four or big ten, you can say um, KPMG, Deloitte, Ernst and Young, and these kind of firms, uh, they would be having some quality control policies and procedures. Uh, for this particular uh, standard, I would be using KPMG's uh, system of quality control. I would be showing you uh, what quality control procedures they have and taking it as a base, I would be explaining this particular standard on auditing. Now, uh, first of all, uh, we need to be introduced to this. See, to provide reasonable assurance, why do we need um, quality control procedures and policies so that we can comply we can ensure that the audit is being complied with the accounting stand or sorry auditing standards we have some auditing standards um, sf 700 500 these are auditing standards we are working with under uh, now as of now we are doing sa 220 so these standards need to be complied with so for this we have some quality control policies and procedure which ensure that or provides you a reasonable assurance that you are complying with the auditing standards so to provide reasonable assurance that the audit is conforming to generally accepted auditing standards that is GAS to provide reasonable assurance you are having a reason see absolute assurance is that you are 100% sure reasonable assurance is that you are quite sure I mean 90% sure of this uh, this within this range it's because you cannot in in auditing you cannot obtain 100% assurance it is next to impossible you can only obtain reasonable assurance there is d definitely a doubt of uncertainty now to provide a reasonable assurance that the audit is conforming to generally ex to to these auditing standards the audit firm should establish quality control policies and procedure audit firm is your firm the client not the client it is not the client it is the firm which is auditing the KPMG Ernst and Young, Bartley were uh, working under uh, Ernst and Young, Sahani, SNB. You might have heard uh, at least one of these uh, firms. They are the one who is going who are going to uh, establish these quality control policies and procedures. See, uh, now we are having two kinds of responsibility. One is for establishing the quality control system for the whole entity. That is uh, the system of quality control. It is going to be established by the your uh, by the by the firm. And when we are de when you are dealing with a particular engagement, that is, for example, KPMG, it has various clients. PwC, it has various clients. They, for PwC, the whole as a whole, your uh, quality control system would be established by the firm, that is the PwC itself. But when you are talking about a client of PwC, for example, uh, PwC has uh, various automobile clients, uh, almost more than we can say 60-70% of India's automobile industry uh, the industries which are working in india or uh, these automobile industries are under are have given their audit to pwc so taking an example of bmw say for example there would be definitely a particular partner who who, who would be having such uh, this engagement that is there is a pwc and it is having close to say for example 100 partners there are 100 partners and each partner is having some kind of assignments assignments are known as engagements over here so when you are talking about bmw as an audit as a client for as far as bmw is concerned for this particular client if you are making an uh, quality control procedures then this is the responsibility of the engagement partner the himself right if there are 100 partners one partner is entitled to bmw that one partner is going to decide the qualities and pro, uh, quality control policies and procedures for BMW only. But as far as uh, quality control policies and procedures for the organization as a whole, it is going to be developed by PwC. So the responsibility of quality control system for audit or attestation work is of the audit firm. 
quality control system for audit the complete thing is of the audit firm under system of quality control what is sqc i will be explaining you later on whereas for the particular audit engagement that is for, for as i give you an example of bmw for a particular audit engagement engagement partner and the engagement team are responsible for maintaining the quality control for the engagement as per the audit firm's system of quality control that is the engagement partner is going to ensure that these uh, quality control policies and procedures are being applied as far as that engagement is concerned they have to maintain the quality this is just a kind of summarization for auditor attestation work this as a whole the audit firm is responsible for uh, of uh, uh, quality for quality control and uh, for a particular audit engagement it is the engagement partner and the team uh, this would be better clearer um, more clearer uh, when you when we move on uh, further in this particular video so before i move on to the system of quality control i guess i should show you the pwc's uh, system of quality control see uh, Uh, I'm showing you through my laptop. See, this is KPMG's uh, system of audit quality controls, right? Of uh, relating to 2014, they are having their uh, system of quality control. So let's see what all things are there. Our internal quality control system and procedures are quality control elements independence integrity ethics and objectivity these are all the, going to be covered in this standard and auditing independence monitoring approval of audit or non audit services see um, see we have independence integrity ethics and objectivity see if you want to ensure that the audit is done in a good quality way what you have to ensure is that the auditor should be independent the independence is very very important in this integrity ethical it should be ethical it should be objectivity oh, i mean objective in its nature like um, it should not be biased the, so to ensure kpmg in bermuda's independence integrity ethics and objectivity the firm and all professionals assigned to each engagement must be free from financial interest so they are trying to ensure the uh, independence of the firm then see over here we have approval of audit and non audit services so what, are, what is under this that they do not want to enter into any engagement that is they do not want to accept the work of a client who's who, who's prohibited i mean the law do not permit the uh, K permit KPMG to be an auditor for such class of uh, such class of firm like uh, such class of a client like uh, in case of government companies they need uh, they need an auditor approved by CAG etc so there are many rules and regulations so to so this so they should ensure that they are not so see we have there to ensure we do not provide prohibited services to our public audit clients and their affiliates and to ensure we obtain a pre-approval of all permitted services from clients audit committee kpmg has developed a conflict checking system called sentinel this is um, and their own uh, system they have established and then independence monitoring uh, i've already told you so these uh, this is the quality control how they are ensuring that the quality is good or the audit quality of audit is good ethics and integrity these are definitely are going to be covered in this standard auditing as we will move on to the in this video you will find that ethics and integrity is the um, is a part of this standard as well which is, says that you need to uh, it, is re, it is the responsibility of the auditor to ensure ethic it should to to be ethical in its, uh, nature while performing the audit so clients confidentiality do not disclose the in, we, i mean we do not disclose KPMG is saying that we do not disclose the confidential that is important information of um, of our clients to third parties without their approval or uh, unless it is required by law. So these things are there in this uh, system of quality controls. So I guess this is more than enough for you to have an idea about what this is. Right. So see, uh, we're moving on to the system of quality control now. I will be, if in case we do need it again, we'll refer it um, through this video. So now, 
system of quality control it deals with firms responsibility to establish and maintain system of quality control for audit engagement the kpmg has established a system of quality control it was the firm's responsibility to establish this and this is and this is what system of quality control one deals with so it includes policies and procedures that address each of the following elements you you would have found, found this uh, in that video as well leadership responsibilities for quality within the firm we are going to discuss this in, uh, it in detail relevant ethical requirements i showed you in this in that um, kpmg's view document acceptance and continuance of client relationship and specific engagements whether you should accept it or not again uh, i told you that you might be prohibited human resource engagement performance monitoring these are going to be discussed <coughs> Now the scope and objective of the standard. This essay deals with auditor's responsibility regarding quality control procedures for an audit of financial statements. The same as I wrote over there uh, to establish and maintain this quality control procedures of an audit of financial statement. It also addresses. So basically, what is happening is that we have this particular video, this particular standard in auditing is divided into two broad things. One is the responsibility of the auditor and the other one is responsibility of the reviewer that is engagement quality control reviewer's responsibility. These are two things which are going to be covered in this standard and auditing and who is an engagement quality control reviewer we are going to do or discuss it now. So so see who is an engagement quality control reviewer he can be a partner the engagement partner he can be any other person in the firm he can be suitably qualified external person as well these are the three persons who can be a partner who can be an engagement quality eq eq refers to engagement quality control our reviewer right so engagement quality control reviewer can be a partner it can be any person in the firm or person outside the firm but suitably qualified or it can be a team of these three a partner and then some some persons within the firm some person some qualified external persons etc and they form a team and that that can be an external quality control reviewer so the a team of such individuals these three individuals a team of such individuals but in this case the team should be headed by a member of institute right the team should be headed by a member of the institute of chartered accountants of india and so the engagement quality control reviewer can be a partner other persons qualified person team of such person they should be having sufficient and appropriate s and a means sufficient and appropriate experience this is a must because they are reviewing the performance they are reviewing that whether the quality has been kept up to the mark if they are reviewing something for reviewing something you should understand that thing first and understanding means you should be having some experience you would have you should have already done that before so they should be having sufficient and appropriate experience and authority to objectively evaluate before the report is issued see what is happening is that before the report is issued you have not issued the report to the third parties that is you have although made the report the audit report has been prepared but it has not been disclosed to the shareholders to the third parties it is just with the auditor so before the report is issued you are going to evaluate that is the engagement quality control reviewer is going to evaluate two things <coughs> the significant judgments that the that the engagement team has made and the conclusions they have reached in formulating the audit report that is formulating therefore it has already been prepared the report has been prepared and you might have reached some conclusions the eqcr shall evaluate it eqcr shall also evaluate the judgments you have made the engagement team has made or significant judgments uh, that the engagement team has made right so this is what the engagement quality control reviewer has to evaluate he should have sufficient and appropriate experience he can be a partner he can be a person within the firm person outside the firm but suitably qualified or a team of such individuals headed by the institute a member of the institute of chartered accountants of india right now the objectives of the auditor so the objective of the auditor or uh, has been divided into two let's see what it is to implement quality control procedures at the engagement level that provide the auditor with reasonable assurance the objective is to implement 
quality control procedures he is implementing the quality control procedures at the engagement level now why is he is he implementing these why is he implementing the quality control procedures he wants to ensure that the audit complies with the professional standards and regulatory and legal requirements see in the beginning of the video i told you that to provide reasonable assurance that it, the audit is conforming to auditing standards therefore we prepare we, we established quality controls the purpose of quality control is to ensure that the standards and auditing have been complied with they have been confirmed so this is the objective of the auditor he wants to ensure that they are complied with these professional standards and also with the laws and regulation as well our audit is conforming to these our audit complies with these right this is what the auditor wants to ensure and for ensuring this the auditor perform or the auditor implements quality control at the engagement level and he also wants to ensure that the auditor's report is that is that issue that is issued is appropriate the issued audit report is appropriate in the circumstances so these two things in order to prove these two things he implement the quality control at the engagement level this is the objective of the auditor now we are moving on to the major portion of this standard on auditing video which is the responsibility of the engagement partner i earlier told you the video has been divided or the standard has been divided into two parts the responsibility of the auditor one and the responsibility of the engagement quality control reviewer that is two first we are on to the responsibility of the engagement partner so to ensure that the quality control for an audit of financial statement for particular audit engagement he is ensuring that quality control sorry to ensure quality control for an audit procedure of financial statements for particular audit engagement the engagement partner should follow the following requirements he has to follow these requirements uh, what are they we are going to discuss in detail see d d d over here i have put d the mark d in uh, four points uh, whenever you are watching my videos uh, you would find these kind of marks in some of my videos d refers to documentation that is the in if you have watched my some of my videos you would have found found, found that uh, at the end of the standard we always provide details what regarding what the auditor has to document that is the standard finishes with a with a subheading documentation that is what the auditor has to document so these d refers to what the auditor has to document he has to document regarding the ethical requirements whether they have been followed or not independence um, whether i mean there are events which are causing uh, threat to the independence of the auditor the acceptance and continuance of client relationship and this is the engagement quality control review this is the only standard this is the only standard where not only auditor has to document something even the engagement quality control reviewer has also has to document something which we are going to discuss the first thing legal uh, sorry leadership responsibilities see the whole standard is regarding this leadership responsibility i think these responsibilities not just leadership responsibility but regarding these responsibilities so the first thing which we have is leadership responsibility that is the auditor should say that i am responsible for the quality of the audit um, quality of the audit he he should take the responsibility for the quality, quality of the audit right so engagement partner should take responsibility for the overall quality of each audit engagement assigned to him if that partner is uh, having an audit of bmw and that partner is also having an audit of maruti suzuki he should say that i am responsible for the quality of that audit and then we have ethical requirements see uh, if you have already completed your orientation program you would have been given a booklet a kind of booklet where uh, if you if you would have opened that booklet you would you would have found that uh, it con consists of some code of ethics which the with the institute of chartered accountants of india has issued although uh, many of the institute do not uh, i mean in the orientation classes they do not use these uh, books but if you go through that you would find some code of ethics and even if if you haven't completed your orientation program yet if you find if you go online in the, on the icis website it has code of ethics if you go if you go download to download the e journals uh, or if you have see it you would have found that there are two or three pages on code of ethics in every in every month 
whereby people ask questions in the in the month of january i was reading one question that was that i am a chartered accountant in practice the heading is code of ethics i am a chartered accountant in practice and i want to i am giving co- coaching classes or tuition classes to students am i eligible is it ethical or am i eligible to uh, grant these tuition classes so the answer was that a chartered accountant is permitted to give tuition classes for a period of 25 for a for a duration of 25 hours in a week so this is uh, this is, is what uh, code of ethics says so these things are always there so i see i issues the code of ethics and you need to ensure that the code of ethics have been followed because if you follow the code of ethics the quality will improve so ultimately these requirements are going to boost up your uh, quality if you are ethical the quality will improve if you are independent quality will improve if you are not accepting those engagements which you are prohibited the quality will improve assign engagement team etc everything is going to improve the quality right so throughout the audit engagement throughout the audit engagement engagement partner shall remain alert he should remain alert for evidence of non compliance with relevant ethical requirements by members of the engagement team that is the if the member of engagement team is not uh, complying with ethical requirements you should be alert how can you be alert through inquiries you may inquire you may observe so through inquiries and observation you should see to it that the members are complying with the members of the engagement team are complying with the ethical requirements now the code of ethics issued by icci as i told you establishes the fundamental principles of professional ethics it includes the integrity objectivity professional competence and due care uh, professional competence as refers to your um, technical knowledge or experience uh, you are capable etc confidentiality that do not disclose the important information of uh, the clients to any third party without the approval of the third party or unless it is required by law do not disclose the the confidential information of the client to any third party then we have professional behavior be i mean professional behavior is something which you must be knowing i mean being professional being professional <clears throat> in nature okay so now we have um, independence the auditor has to identify the events i mean there could be some events there could be some circumstances which uh, give a uh, give um or i'm um, not able to find a word for this um which boost the chances of uh, you losing your independence there are events which are threat to your independence right so you need to identify those events and try to remove those events if you can remove it discuss it with those charged with governance or the management if they are not involved in those threats etc and if you are not able to remove those threats then the only outcome the only possibility that you would be having the, or the only option you would be having is to give or resign or withdraw from the engagement and withdrawal you, you can only withdraw from the engagement or resign from the engagement only when you are permitted by law if the law says you cannot then you cannot right so now let's see about the independence uh the engagement partner shall form a conclusion on compliance with independence first of all he has to conclude regarding the compliance with the independence requirements that apply to the engagement then identify the threats to independence regarding the audit this is the main portion identify threats to independence regarding the audit engagement that safeguard now this is very important you are identifying threats that's fine but these threats are those threats which even you are taking some steps but still they are not being able to, you are not able, able to remove those threats that safeguards may not safeguard means you are taking some steps you are trying to remove those threats but they may not be able to reduce to an acceptable level still they these threats are present they are not i mean insignificant they are still significant risks or threats to the independence now what the auditor has to do the engagement part sorry the engagement partner is the same person as the auditor engagement partner reports to the relevant persons within the firm to determine appropriate action which may include now he he is communicating with the relevant persons and now what, the purpose of communication is to obtain uh, to determine uh, appropriate action and now this appropriate action may include eliminating the activity or inter, uh, interest that is this uh, this threat you are eliminating this threat that creates i mean the the sorry i'm um, you're eliminating this threat through removing the your uh, activity which is causing this threat right 
so eliminating the activity or interest that creates this uh, threat so ultimately you are removing this threat but if you cannot remove that threat withdraw from engagement only when where it is legally permitted if it is legally permitted only then in that case you can resign that is withdraw from the engagement now uh, So we are done with leadership responsibility, ethical requirements, independence, now acceptance and continuance of client relationship as I already told you that except only those, um, I mean as I showed you in the KPMG's uh, document that they do not accept those engagements which are prohibited etc. So the engagement partner shall be satisfied that appropriate procedures regarding the acceptance and continuance of client relationship and audit engagements have been followed see um oh see engagement partner should be satisfied that appropriate procedures regarding the acceptance and continuance of client relationship and audit engagements have followed there are these procedures are already laid down in your uh, system of quality control manual which you, which the firm issues or establishes you as an engagement partner has to ensure that these procedures regarding the acceptance and continuance of client relationship that is you accept new client uh, new engagements acceptance regarding audit engagements and continuance of client relationship you are continuing as an auditor and those have been followed those procedures which have which uh, have been laid down by the uh, your uh, firm has been followed now the policies and procedures should provide reasonable assurance that the firm will not as be associated with clients whose management lacks integrity integrity means i mean there are conflicts within the management they they one one part of the management is saying something the other part is saying a different thing etc is happening in the management so you you, you definitely do won't won't want won't want to be a part of or an auditor of such clients now the firm should undertake only those engagement that can be completed with professional competence you have the knowledge I um, mean, if you are auditing the accounts of uh, of, a, of a bank, you should be having some experience with with the bank audit, right? Now consider the risks which are associated with that engagement. Now, assign. So now we are done with the acceptance and continuance of client relationship, uh, and then we have assignment of engagement team. See. Engagement partner shall be satisfied that the engagement team and the auditors expert have the collective collectively have the appropriate competence and capabilities. As I give you an example of the banking audit, when you're send, sending some uh, send, sending an engagement team to audit the banks, you should ensure that at least one person out of the senior members of the engagement team has already done a bank audit earlier. Because if you all are new to the bank audit, you won't be able to complete the bank audit. Right, so engagement partner shall be satisfied that the engagement team and the auditors expert who are not a part of engagement team. If you have watched my video on auditors expert uh, standard, you would be knowing that auditors expert is a person who is not an expert in auditing and accountancy. He is an expert in some third field. That is, he could be an expert in an architecture uh, whereby, uh, whereby the auditor wants to, is auditing an accounts of a construction site and uh, you, he wants to know the degree of completion or the percentage of completion of the building now he hires an architect who is an expert in this and he tells that 75 percent of the building has been completed then you go on to examine whether uh, they are using the cost method of if uh, if you have if you know about the construction contracts auditing standard in that auditing standard there's um, there are different methods of eval valuing the constructions works but you need the percentage of completion percentage of completion of that building so thereby you are using an auditor's expert he is not an expert in the auditing or accountancy field so now engagement partner shall be satisfied that the engagement team and the auditor's expert collectively have appropriate competence and capabilities to perform audit engagement in accordance with professionals you are following the standards the laws and regulations and enables the auditor's report is appropriate this is something which i already discussed that you for, this is the objective of the auditor that the professional standards and law and regulations have been followed the and the audit report is appropriate in these circumstances all right now we have uh, engagement performance 
before I move on I need to show you the objective again yeah this is it order complies with the professional standard and regulatory and legal requirements and over here as well I told you that uh, for the order engagement partner has to ensure that the the engagement has been in accordance with the professional standards and regulatory and legal requirements and similar manner the auditor's report is appropriate the enable to enable the auditor's report that is appropriate in these circumstances to be issued right uh, now we have engagement performance see now we are on to the engagement performance so engagement performance is regarding supervision that the auditor should super, should take another responsibility earlier i told you that the auditor takes the responsibility uh, leadership responsibility that i am responsible for the quality now the auditor is taking the one more responsibility that i am responsible for the supervision the engagement partner shall take the responsibility of supervision of the engagement team and directing to them uh, direct giving direction to them so that audit report is appropriate in the circumstances this is the objective of the auditor so he's uh, supervising them he's uh, directing them and accepting his responsibility for the same now how is going to supervise he's going to track the progress of audit, uh, audit engagement that uh, how, what what areas have been audited what areas are left how much percentage of the work has been completed what percentage of the work is left so you're tra tracking the progress of the audit engagement then addressing significant matters arising during the audit engagement now they are some significant matters i mean they are important matters considering their significance and modifying the plans planned approach appropriate um, appropriately see what is happening is that uh, on for the period 2014-15 on uh, which starts on 1st of april you had already had a kind of uh, an audit approach and your audit approach was uh, that we are going to audit these areas and five items in every area but when you audited the accounts you found up you find that in a particular area uh, there's there's some significant or material misstatements now in that area you need to increase you need to increase the number of items that you are going to examine or audit so this so during the course of audit if you are obtain some significant matters or material items you need to change you need to modify the modify your auditing approach so while you are addressing the significant matters arising during the audit engagement consider their significance and modify the planned approach appropriately then identifying matters for consultation or consideration by more experienced engagement team members during the audit engagement so i hope that uh, if if you are working with a, with a particular firm or if uh, even if you are not uh, there, there was a as i always take the example of talk tackle with then there's a this is a firm in that particular firm or in every firm there would be definitely a person who would be ex having vast experience in direct taxes one would be having a vast experience in indirect taxes etc whom we call idt guru or dt guru etc so every organization has such kind of person so you identify some if you have any problem uh, if uh, regarding idt if you have any problem in something related to indirect tax you straight away go to that particular person because he is having experience he is having a vast knowledge in that field right so same thing is written over here that identifying matters for consultation or consideration consulting and consideration by more experienced engagement team members during the audit engagement then now the fourth thing that the which uh, which the part of the supervision by the engagement team uh, engagement partner is is considering the competence capabilities of individual members you are getting, you are considering the competence of that is the knowledge level the technical knowledge the capability of individual members of the engagement team including whether they have sufficient time to carry out their work so for example you cannot tell your engagement team to say complete the audit uh, ernst and young is having an audit of uh, airtel you can't tell Ernst and Young that complete the audit of Airtel in this particular week. You should be given some sufficient time. One week is nothing if you are auditing the accounts of Airtel. Right, so whether they have sufficient time to carry out their work, whether they have understood their, their instructions. So say for example, you tell a particular person that you need to audit the bad debts. Uh, you take the whole week, seven days in a week. 
you take seven days and audit completely audit the bad debts now what you as an engagement team head or the engagement partner meant was that you wanted him to audit bad debts provision for bad debts and provision for doubtful debts as well but he thought that he's he has to audit just bad debts so you need to see to it that whether he's able to understand their uh, in, understand the instructions or not this is the part of supervision then whether the work is being carried out in accordance with the planned approach you had a planned approach and as i told you over here that you have a planned approach that you're going to audit these areas so you have to see to it that they have the work the work which your juniors are for, for performing or carrying out the, it is in accordance with the planned approach of the to the audit uh, engagement so now we have review the full seven point seven point engage after engagement performance we have review this is another responsibility of the audit uh, engagement partner we are already 30 35 36 minute in this video and still quite a few uh, amount of work left right see now we have review the engagement partner shall be shall take the responsibility the third responsibility that is taking first he said i am responsible for the uh, quality now he's then he said i am responsible for the supervision now he's saying that i am that i am responsible for the review obviously he is responsible for the reviews because he is the head of the engagement team engagement partner shall take the responsibility for reviews being performed in accordance with the firm's review policies and procedures in that particular manual of kpmg there was also a point regarding the reviews or sorry regarding the, the reviews policies and procedure they have policies and procedure for each aspects of audit so the auditor shall take the responsibility that the review is performed as per the review policies and procedures the, the firm that is a kpmg has review policies and procedure the or the engagement partner says that i have performed the reviews according to these policies and procedures only now what the uh, this um, review is going to consist of is that a review may consist of consideration whether the work has been performed in accordance with the standards law regulation as i earlier told you significant matters have arisen if significant matters have been raised for further consideration maybe with with the indirect tax guru appropriate consultation has been have been taken place resulting conclusions have been documented now you we are straight away saying that this needs to be documented so i put a d that at the end of this uh, standard we are going to document this so appropriate consultations you have consulted some professionals regarding a problem which you are facing or regarding any matter and resulting conclusions so you obtain a conclusion and they should be documented and implemented you obtain some consultations that he said that uh, in order to overcome such problem do this you have to ensure that they have been documented and implemented whatever recommendation that professional gave document that and implement that as well this is what the engagement partner is going to review that whether they are documenting or uh, implementing that or not there is a need to revise nature timing you should see that whether we need to change the nature timing and extent of the work performed the work per nt refers to nature timing and extent the work nature timing and extent have been explained in some other videos the nature refers to basically what kind of work you are doing timing refers to what period of audit there is extent refers to how much i mean in depth you're going you're going for sampling you're going for 100 percent examination or you are choosing three items out of 10 items so this is not exact extent nature is what kind of audit as i already gave you an example of thakur vedinathan uh, in that form my friend is auditing the accounts of prime minister's office uh, although they do not charge any fees as uh, such for this and uh, he's auditing the auditing the prime minister's national relief fund so you must have heard about in in the exemption under uh, or deduction under section 80g so the nature is just the prime minister national relief fund timing is that he's auditing the accounts for 2014-15 fourth quarter extent is um, they have they are specifically told that you have to go for 100 percent examination you cannot go for sampling now then we have the work performed supports the conclusions reached and it is appropriately documented these are very easy examples the evidence obtained is sufficient and appropriate to approach to support the auditor's report you have obtained evidences they should be they should be sufficient and they are appropriate if you want to know what sufficiency and appropriateness refers to you may watch my video on sa 500 as well to support the auditor's report 
and they have they have the evidences uh, to support the auditor's report then we are on we have completed a review now we are on to engagement quality control review this is something which is going to be documented we are going to hire an engagement quality control reviewer there are only two kind of firms which are required to hire an engagement quality control reviewer and what firms are they first of all it is listed companies that is in case of listed companies it is mandatory that you have to hire a engagement quality control reviewer see in case of audit of financial statement of listed companies or the second point is <coughs> those audits which are subject to quality control review there are some audits which are subject to quality control review as per quality control policy of the firm the firm's policy the kpmg's policy says that you need to hire the hire an engagement quality control reviewer when you are auditing such class of companies or such class of uh, entities or such classes of clients so those audits which are subject to quality control review and what who says that this is subject that we have to apply the quality control review it is the quality control policy of the firm which says that you need to hire you need uh, these are subject to quality control review these clients are subject to quality control review so the audit of financial statements of listed companies and other audits which have um, which are subject to quality control review as per quality control policy of the firm now what do they have to do this uh, this is a case what do they have to do the engagement partner shall ensure that engagement quality control reviewer is appointed this is what we have to do we have to appoint a <clears throat> an engagement quality control reviewer we have to discuss significant matters with him it is not just hired here we have to discuss significant matters with him and this is very important do not date the audit report until engagement quality control review is completed this is something which is again going to be documented do not date the audit report that is your if this is your audit report you cannot put a date on this because date is going to be put when when you have completed the review once you have ensured the quality control review has been completed only in that case you can date this um, audit report so do not date the audit report until engagement quality control review has completed now engagement quality control reviewer uh, who who can be an engagement quality control reviewer i have already discussed in, uh, in the earlier part of this video that he can be a partner he can be a within the firm outside the firm or a team etc now we are on to engagement quality control reviewer shall what he shall evaluate now these six things is are going to be evaluated discussion of, of significant matters with the engagement partners evaluate those uh, discussions that he had with the engagement partner then review of financial statement and proposed audit report see over here i have told you that do not date the audit report that is we are not going to put a date on the audit report but the audit report has been prepared and it is known as proposed audit report the 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 engagement quality control reviewer has to <coughs> evaluate he has to review the fun <coughs> the financial statement and proposed audit report and the select audit documentation this is something which the engagement quality control reviewer has to do now we have conclusions reached again reviewing uh, yes the eqcr is something which i will be using with for engagement quality control reviewer that is eqcr eqcr is going to evaluate conclusions reached in formulating the audit report you have, would have reached some conclusions and you are going to evaluate those conclusions then the, and the consideration of whether the, the proposed audit report is appropriate or not this is something again uh, discussed it in, it, uh, in the earlier part of the video now these are applicable to the listed entities as well as the other entities which are required as per the quality control policies of the firm that is the two two points where with this these points are applicable that is they have to hire engagement quality control reviewer in these two cases these three in, under these for these three points both of them shall the engagement quality control reviewer shall evaluate these three things in both cases but in regarding these three cases only they are applicable only in case of listed entities all right so now engagement teams evaluation of the firm's independence this has to be evaluated by the eqcr he shall evaluate the see engagement teams 
team has already evaluated the firm's independence. Now what EQCR is going to do is going to evaluate this evaluation. Then evaluate whether appropriate consultation has taken place and conclusions arising from those consultations. You have consulted some professional etc. And uh, if you have uh, consulted someone, the EQCR shall evaluate those consultations. You arrive some conclusion at some conclusions. The EQCR shall also evaluate such conclusions. And then EQCR shall evaluate whether audit documentation selected for reviews reflect the work performed and support such uh, support the conclusion three. These are something which the EQCR is going to evaluate. Really, really easier portion of this uh, video now we are left with this small uh, points um, yeah we are done with the eqcr now we are on to the difference of opinion then we'll move on to the monitoring part now difference of opinion there is a difference of opinion among within the engagement team that is with the engagement partner and the uh, senior members of the engagement team or uh, June or with the articles of the engagement team, there is a misunderstanding or uh, they, they are having different opinions. One says something else and the other one is saying that you are wrong, I am right. Or there could be a difference of opinion between the engagement partner and the EQCR. EQCR is saying that this should be done while the engagement partner says that what I have done is right. So in this case, what, what, what can be done? You would be having some quality control policies and procedures by the firm you have to follow them. So engagement team shall follow the firm's policy and procedure. That is, they would open the document given by the KPMG and they're going to follow them for dealing with the with and resolving difference of opinion. They would be having such columns or such points. Just follow them. This is uh, this is what the uh, engagement team has to do in case of difference of opinion. They will be able to know who is right or who is wrong and what should what should we do, etc. Through through this particular document that the policies and procedures of the firm. Then we have monitoring another VG parts SQC one the system of quality control one requires the firms to establish <coughs> to establish a monitoring process. The monitoring process means which is going to monitor what is going it is going to monitor designed to provide it with reasonable assurance that policies and procedures relating to the system of quality control is relevant adequate and operating effectively that is we are having policies and procedures regarding the quality control monitoring is what monitoring is going to do is it shall evaluate whether the pol these policies and procedures are relevant is going to sorry it is going to evaluate that whether these policies and procedures are relevant they are adequate and they are operating effectively as well Reading it for another time, SQC1 requires the firm to establish a monitoring process. There is going to be an establishment of monitoring process. And what the monitoring process is going to do, it is going to provide reasonable assurance that these policies and procedures are relevant, they are adequate, they are operating effectively. This is what the monitoring process is going to do. Engagement partner shall consider the results of the firm mon firm's monitoring process. You would be having the results of the, the after the monitoring process. You would get to know the results whether they are relevant or not, etc. The engagement partner has to consider these. This is another responsibility of the auditor to ensure quality. So ultimately, what is happening is that these points are going to ensure that the quality is kept up to the mark. So I've done with these two points as well. Now the only thing which we are left is documentation, which I've already disclosed in the during this uh, video. So. First was regarding the ethical requirements. So let's see. See, documentation, as I earlier told you, has been divided into two parts only in case of this video. One is going to be done by the auditor, and the other one is going to be done by the EQCR, that is, Engagement Quality Control Reviewer. Now, uh, to be done by the auditor, documentation to be done by the auditor, issues identified with respect to compliance with relevant requirements and how they are resolved. Mm. Uh, just to give me a second. I guess it should be ethical requirements. Let me see. Yeah. Yes, it is ethical requirements. Right. So issues identified with respect to compliance with 
relevant ethical requirements so this is um, if you have identified some re issues regarding compliance with this and how they were resolved if you had some issues how did you resolve that issue you need to document this the second thing conclusions on compliance with independence requirement again this independence if you have you you would have reached some conclusions on com you, you have to document the conclusions that you have reached regarding the independence requirement whether you are performing if there are any, any threats or uh, events which are causing a threat to the uh, independence of the auditor and any relevant discussions with the firm that support these conclusions you have reached some conclusions you would could have um, had some discussion with the uh, firm if you have had uh, some discussion document them as well then conclusion reached regarding acceptance and continuance of client relationship and audit evidence the same thing again over here we need to document this then con consultation with other professionals during the course co course of audit consultation also i discussed somewhere but uh, uh, to, during this video you need to doc document that as well whenever you had a consultation with someone uh, some professional during the course of audit engagement let me see if i can show you again um, see in the review portion i told you that appropriate consultations have taken place Resulting conclusions have been doc. Yeah, this is I uh, told you earlier as well. This needs to be documented, and we are documenting this right. This documentation has been done with and under review, as I told you earlier. So, this we have documented now to be done by EQCR. This is something which is going to be documented by EQCR. As I told you, engagement quality control reviewer also has to do has some documentation job. Procedures required by the firm's policies on EQC review have been performed there were policy procedures which were required <coughs> by the firm's policies on eqc review have been performed then eqc review has been completed see this i earlier told you when i was discussing the eqcr i can show you again um, see over here do not date the audit report until engagement quality control is completed so this is what we are documenting we are saying that the engagement quality control review has been completed on or before the date of audit report right then the reviewer is not aware of any this is something important which the uh, reviewer has to document he is going to document that he is not aware of any unresolved matter that is there is a matter which is not which has not been resolved that is which has not been solved and he's saying that I'm not aware of any such matter. That is, if later on you find such kind of matter, I was not aware of this. What kind of matter? Th that kind of matter that would cause the uh, reviewer to believe that the significant judgments that the engagement team made and the conclusions that th they reached were not appropriate. That is, if he knew about this matter, which he don't know, that is, there is a matter over here which has, which the reviewer do not know about but if he knew about this then that would cause the reviewer to believe that the significant judgments the engagement team made and the conclusions they reached that is the engagement team the engagement team is the uh, your uh, the partners the articles the uh, assistants chartered accountants etc they reached so they made some significant judgments and they reached some conclusions but if the reviewer knew about this his judgment about these things i mean his belief about what they have judge, judged or what conclusions the engagement team has made it would have the reviewer would have thought that they were not appropriate now it would be clearer if you read it for the for, for the one last time that the reviewer is not aware of any unresolved matter he do not know about such kind of matter which could cause the reviewer which would cause the reviewer to believe that the judgments the reviewer to believe that judgments and conclusions reached were not appropriate right so that that would cause the reviewer to believe that judgments that engagement team made and conclusions they reached were not appropriate I hope it is clearer now. Uh, this was this sums up my video on essay two hundred and twenty. Uh,
And my next video is going to be probably on 240 or 250. You may like my video, subscribe my channel for further videos. Thank you for watching. Thank you so much.